Do you know why everything goes according to plan with, for example, politicians and governments? And why everything always works out so smoothly for them? Because they stick together and essentially always agree, even if it looks completely different from the outside. The main thing for them is to be in control of the people, who is us. And that's why to us it's supposed to look completely different. They don't let anyone or anything stop them. And they get going whatever they want. They have impressively demonstrated the several several times alone in the past two years. They do not allow themselves to be divided and always stick together, no matter what. The fights between them only take place for the show, after which they drink and celebrate themselves. When it comes down to it, they stand together like an insurm <coughs> Like an insurmountable wall. I'm sorry. That's exactly how it is in large families or family clans. They always stick together no matter what. They're invulnerable in their form because they are always there for one another. Together they are strong. They have recognized that and live it too. And no one can break this strong alliance between them, and therefore they cannot be divided from the outside. And so, a small group of people is almost inviolable because they stick together in any situation that turns against them. Of course, there are fights and twists among all of them. But in case of a crisis or an attack against them, they stick together like bad luck and brimstone. Then, every argument and every disagreement is put aside, and only one thing counts. Cohesion. Sticking together. Cohesion makes groups strong. And we are a pretty big group, with a corresponding potential that we toss like pearls to swine. Because... Let's take a closer look at the world. For whom run things well. For whom not so very. For the politicians, the governments and the rich elites, everything is going exactly as they wanted to successful people. They hold the rest of humanity in a stranglehold and determine world affairs. In the case of those who obey, who divide themselves and allow themselves to be incited against one another, who live the lives of others in this way and don't even notice it, at best thing uh, at best, everything gets out of hand. Not so successful. How come? What we see here is a paradox of what is actually almost impossible. A few hundred thousand people rule over billions of people and determine their lives. Because billions of people let them do it and only because they simply don't know any better. All of this is only possible because we, a huge overwhelming majority of people, do not stick together and allow ourselves to be divided by the flimsy games of these elitist, uh, elitists, elitist circles. 
It is only because we humans let ourselves be blinded and do not stick together that we are now in the position of full uh, restriction, disenlightenment, and dispossession. These elites drive mankind into poverty in order to enrich themselves. But instead of being there for one another like a huge and viable family, the human family, we allow ourselves to be divided by ridiculous differences of opinion. Regardless of whether it is because of religions, because of uh, political indifference, because of health issues, because of money or social status, or because of our genders, they always manage to divide us, humans, into different camps so that we fight each other, end up in wars with and in, and in distance from each other. And we are so downright stupid to do so. The biggest division they have now created through the vaccinations. The vaccinated and the unvaccinated are in two competing camps and there is a real war between them. This war takes place even in the closest circle of friends and family. If we continue to play their games then we no longer have a chance for a free life. Dear friends, if we all want to get out of this situation again in order to live a life worthy living, worth living <laughs> again, then it is completely necessary to put aside every argument and to be there for one another. In view of the current economic situation, it is imperative for all of us to act now. Anyone who does not take precautions now and team up with other people will soon have very big problems that can then no longer be reversed. This applies to the food supply, the energy supply, as well as the supply of building materials and actually everything else. Let's look at the current situation to better understand this. The decline in purchasing power is gaining momentum due to the inflation. The hyperinflation is here and cannot be stopped with normal means. Before we inundate these text, uh, this text with numbers and statistics, let us just look at the inflation in Turkey. The lira has lost 45% of its value since the beginning of the year, and it is still on the downside. Many people there only eat bread, pasta, rice, and water, drink water, in order to survive. And if you think that this does not affect you because Turkey is far away, you should be told that hyperinflation affects every country in the world. It goes faster in some countries and slower in some others, but the end result is the same. Poverty, hunger and dispossession. Money is losing more and more of its value and everything will become more and more expensive, sometimes unaffordable, due to the supply bottlenecks. The speed of the deliberately de generated hyperinflation continues to increase and is ex accelerated, not stopped, by political action. Further restrictions and lockdowns mean that supply chains are further interrupted and there are more and more supply bottlenecks. This will go so far that energy, water and food will soon be very rare. The deliberately created energy crisis is already in full swing and the effects can already be felt. The prices for electricity, gas and oil continue to rise and energy is becoming increasingly scarce. 
With the excuses of the climate catastrophe, the governments justify the restriction of fossil fuels and the shutdown of nuclear power plants without providing compensation through renewable energies. Energy and the fuels required for it will be scarce in the future and will be almost unaffordable for medium-sized businesses. Above all, medium-sized businesses will find themselves increasingly in need in the coming weeks and months. The planning uncertainty due to announced lockdowns, 2G and 3G regu regulations and other measures is huge and the financial reserves of most companies have largely been used up. The banks will no longer grant loans to the failing businesses and the next wave of bankruptcies and layoffs will follow, which will completely wipe out the rest of the small family businesses and the middle class. Small businesses and family businesses are gradually and since decades being starved out and bought up by the big global corporations. More and more people are losing their jobs and have no choice but to let the state take care of them, which is exactly what the governments want. Because the more dependent we people are on them, the easier it is for them to keep us under their control. After the middle class has been driven into poverty, the next step comes, and that is the introduction of digital money and the companion ban on cash. Um, a companioning ban on cash. And when that happens, if we let that happen, then governments have full control and every flow over every flow of money. The universal basic income will be presented to us as a solution and every vaccinated citizen will get this digital money. And from that moment on, Governments have the ability to monitor every single transaction and it will no longer be possible to do a single deal without them knowing about it. And they will keep it taxing. Everything you buy or sell will then be taxed. Even if you buy or sell a used sofa that has already been taxed before. This digital money means the definitive end of the free payment system and the free trade based on it. And it also means that governments have full control over every business that someone does. They are in full control of humanity. And the digital money can be blocked by them at any time or even be tied to an expiry date. That means... It has to be spent within a certain time, otherwise it becomes worthless. Saving money is then no longer, no longer possible. None of these are theories, but this is already the reality which we all currently live in. They want, us, they want to force us <coughs> to get vaccinated every six months. We are being forced to close our stores and we can no longer make any money. We are forced to restrict contact with our families and friends, which leaves us alone, alone and unprotected. Our freedom of movement is being restricted more and more by prohibitions enforced by windy changes in the laws. This is the reality we all find ourselves in and nobody can gloss over it anymore. And all of this does, doesn't just happen in America, Britain, Germany or Europe. It happens all over the world. For these reasons, it is imperative that we humans stick together now. Please settle any quarrels you have with other people and get back together. Team up with your friends, families and with your neighbors and help each other. This is the only way we can survive what comes, in our, uh, what comes our way. Together. 
we are sitting in the same boat. But if we let ourselves be further divided, we will sink with this boat. Governments want us to quarrel so that we can so that we are alone and weak. Please just do not play this game and please do not allow yourself to be incited against your fellow human beings. If we all stick together, there is no one who can rule over us. Alone we are weak. But together we are strong and invulnerable. Only if you understand this and do not allow ourselves to be blinded by the lies that they spread through their media, we have a chance of a free and self-determined sovereign life. If we do not find each other and carry on as before, we will all soon never be able to live in, a f in freedom again. We still have a chance to turn things round, but we only can do this together. We cannot do it alone, and there will also be no savior or messiah who should free us from these or could free us from these states if we do not change ourselves inside. As long as we keep fighting, no one can save us. If we stop fighting, no one needs to save us anymore, because then our greatest danger is averted. We, ourselves. We experience this hell on earth because we ourselves create it anew every day. We. Because we obey others and make each other's lives this hell. Who should be a threat to us? When we finally stop this, friends, please put aside every argument you have with your friends, with your families, with your neighbors, or with your with other people, and make up. These fights do not serve you. The greatest weapon of the powerful against us is division. And it only works if we play along. An example, if we argue and fight and kill each other. And they use this weapon so wisely that we don't even notice how many people we reject that we actually love. We shouldn't be naive and prepare for what may come. That means, point one, create food stocks that can be kept for a long time and in which, in which ensure a drinking water supply. In an emergency water storage, water tanks, domestic water works with rainwater filter and additional drinking water filter. That doesn't just make sense at the moment, but fundamentally. Point two, stock up on seeds, fruits, vegetables and herbs. Seeds are the gold of the future. Point three, provide yourself with emergency energy through solar generators and solar systems as these are operated without fuel. Point four, provide warmth in the event of a power failure. A wood-burning stove can always be operated, as firewood is available almost everywhere, even in an emergency. Point 5. Stock up on everything else that you will need in the future. With building materials, with tools, and all the important things that you might have, but which can also break. Everything is becoming more and more expensive, and many stocks are becoming increasingly scarce. Point 6. Anyone owning a garden has the opportunity to get chickens and other farm animals. The chickens' daily eggs alone can feed you in an emergency and even save lives. Point 7. 
build your own greenhouses that you support in winter with LED plant lamps and, in best case, heat it by a bioheater or something similar. This guarantees you the, the partial food supply even in winter. Point 8. Convert useless ornamental gardens and rock gardens into, into vulnerable kitchen gardens that provide you and your fellow human beings with food. Point 9. Save the rainwater for irrigation and have a well drilled for you if you don't have one. Nothing grows without water. It is the most vital basic element. Point 10. Anyone who has capital should invest in the above, as well as buying land and property. Fertile land will soon be one of the only val valuable goods that really make sense and that will last in the long term. <coughs> Point 11. Learn to trust yourselves and those around you again instead of some people you only know from the media and who don't know you at all. Point 12. Ignore these people. Pretend they don't exist at all. Should one of them really stand in front of you, give him a big hug or her. But don't feel smaller than them. Point 13. Remember yourself and allow yourself to question whatever you have been taught. Is it really useful to you? If not, forget it. Then it bothers. Point 14. Live as independently as possible. Learn to meet your needs yourself again, if possible. Instead of making yourself dependent on things that you cannot regulate yourself and have to outsource them. This will significantly increase your quality of life. Point 15. Give each other the interest that you have shown some idols so far. You will not regret it. Point 16. Feed your hands with good food. In other words, deal with topics that will take you further, that leave, that leave exclamation marks in your head and not more and more question marks. Topics that are good for you. Follow your interests instead of the call to work. Your interests will lead you to your true talents. And they cannot be outweighed by gold for you. They, your talents, will be the fundamental base of your new, of your new life. Point 17. Be honest with each other and with yourself. This way no one can ever infiltrate, deceive or exploit you again. Point 18. Do your thing, live your life and allow everyone else to do the same. Just make sure to do what you do in such a way that nobody has to suffer from it. Then, and so, you can do whatever you want, and no one will be, will be bothered by it. Be considerate of one another, and never lose respect for one another. Point 19. Never lose your sense of humor. It is the key to the emergency exit from any drama. And at last point 20, enjoy life. It just neither makes sense nor fun not to do it. Money, gold, silver, diamonds and other material values will be completely worthless in the near future. 
What is needed is water, food and energy. Money and gold cannot be eaten and in case of a crisis nobody will exchange them for water or food. In the times that lie ahead, the only things that count are those that keep us alive. Many people should rethink their priorities and understand that material things will soon be completely worthless because they don't still any hunger. Let's prepare. Let's join together. And we will survive these times well together. If you don't do that, you will go under one by one, alone. Death is inevitable. Do not wait too long for others. Like to be one of those who set the avalanche rolling and be one of those others are waiting for. I write this urgently because I see that more and more people are arguing and fighting. More and more are taking distance from each other, which is the very most stupid thing we can do in these times. This is exactly what the powerful leaders want. Because only if we fight and not stick together, they can easily realize their dark plans. It is up to us how our future is shaped. Each and every one of us, and only us. It's up to us. Each of us is important, very important, much, so much more important than most people think of themselves, which is really sad. That they think so bad about themselves, <laughs> of course. The most valuable thing in the world are real friendships. People who are there for each other in every situation. People you can always rely on. People for whom the spoken word still counts and is respected. Who still know or at least remember what terms like love, respect, trust, eye level, etc. mean. We have to find our way back to these genuine friendships. Because this is the only way we can rewrite the great book of life for all of us together. Think about it. Yes, times are bad. But we could change everything with just a few tiny changes in our mindsets. This invitation is welcome to be forwarded and submitted to anyone who just wants to quarrel. Or fight. Perhaps this little change in the way people react is world changing. Don't get into an argument. Just change the subject and chat with the other person about the thoughts and this text. Realize that and why arguing and fighting is the last, the very last thing you want to do. Once again, it's not serve you. By the way, if you stop fighting about your different points of view and instead listen to each other again and don't dismiss other points of view as crazy, you will see how much clarity you already have left and have let yourself be robbed by arguing or fighting alone. Have fun with the logical with the logical expansion of consciousness. Have fun in your new, much nicer life. Lie in your arms again. It's so much nicer. With love a friend. <laughs>